Hello, Tom McGuire. I'm just going to do a review of the book Beyond Possible by Nims Di Perger. Now, this is going to be a bit of a tricky review, to be fair, because I really don't want to slag this book off because I've got so much time for the guy from what I've read about him, what I've seen uh, from him on YouTube and things. Uh, but I just, I have to say this book was just nowhere near as good as it could have been, which is just a bit of a shame. I'm sure, you know, whatever. I always just give my honest opinion on these things and what he achieved is fantastic. It doesn't take anything away from what he's achieved. Maybe he kind of rushed getting it done. Maybe he didn't have much support getting it written potentially. I, I don't know. But I just, if I'm being honest, I just found the narration just pretty boring. And for such a kind of potentially exciting story, that just left me a little bit cold, really. And bit of a shame it's still it's still worth a read or a listen um I listened to it on audible I might potentially give the book a proper read actually because I, it'd be nice to get to get a different perspective I often don't find a lot of difference between listening to a book and reading a book but sometimes for some books it can make a difference so I might give that a go at some point because I kind of want to give this book a chance because I kind of like the guy so much from what I've seen of him so he he was a Gurkha and the Gurkhas are absolutely fantastic if you don't know anything about them look them up uh, do a bit of research on them I always remember my dad telling me about the Gurkhas I remember always telling me that uh the Gurkhas and the American Marines were out in town and apparently the Marines started trouble and I remember dad saying to me with a look of glee on his face that the Gurkhas kicked the shit out of them which was good and that always put a thing in my mind of he always used to say to me how the Gurkhas are hard as nails and they're just like these soft American Marines just didn't stand a chance against them. What the hell were they thinking sort of thing. And that just always stuck in my mind from a, from a young age. So I've always had quite a lot of time for the Gurkhas, not just for that reason. If you do a bit of research on them, they're just, they're very interesting. Tough as nails, I think it's fair to say. And obviously Nims die, Nims perjure is clearly a bit of a freak of nature. You know, if there's any such thing as superhuman, he's pretty close to that. He's obviously... From what he says in this book, he's obviously cut out for, for climbing peaks and, and being in the death zone at above 8,000 metres. The only book I've reviewed, I think the only, oh no, I've reviewed The Fear Bubble by Ant Middleton, which I think is really, really good. Um, and also, uh, what's the other one? I'll put it, I'll edit it in afterwards. There's another one where the, it was a famous disaster on Everest years and years ago. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, and if I was to compare this to the Ant Middleton one, Ant Middleton's just... His books are just far better at kind of telling a story in a more kind of interesting, gripping way, basically. That's kind of, that's the difference, I think. Um, I guess Ant Middleton's a bit of a class. He's, he is kind of an entertainer, isn't he, as well as everything else that he does. And so he's able to kind of, his books are far more, they are entertaining, you know, as well as being everything else that they are. Um it might not be fair to compare them necessarily, but I'm just comparing them because there are similarities. This guy was a Gurkha, then he went into the special boat service. So he's hugely capable, hugely tough, hugely single-minded, um, you know, very strong mindset and things. So I just tend to compare the two. Yeah, there was a few things in this book as well that irritated me a little bit. And when it comes to mountain climbing, there are a few things that irritate me anyway. And feel free to comment off afterwards and tell me how, how wrong I am and what how opinionated I am and stuff. But I'm just giving my honest opinion. There, was, there were a few things that kind of stood out to me when I was listening to this, because I tend to listen to things thinking from a personal development point of view. I think, you know, what can I learn from this? What can I, what lesson can I learn to be a better person when I listen to this book or read this book? And he said a few things that kind of got my back up a little bit. And I kind of thought, no, oh, not sure about that. Um, he's saying, and I'm not quoting him now, but he was saying at some point about not wanting to become old and rot away and die that way. He's saying how how much better it would be to die in kind of glory on a mountain or some, doing something dangerous and kind of exciting. And, and, and that's kind of cool. That, that's fine. I get that there are people who have that mindset, who need that adrenaline thing. I think Ant, Ant Middleton would probably consider himself to be one of those people as far as I can tell. But it kind of irritated me a little bit because it just sounded a bit sort of self-entitled. I'm sure he didn't mean it that way, but it just came across that way in the book. It just sounded a bit like I wanted to sort of shout back at the book. You know, do you not think we all want to not rot away? None of us want to become old and see ourselves in the morning in the mirror, how much more physically weak we are than we used to be. And I've seen people get old and die. You know, I work in social care and stuff. I've done for years. I cared for my father-in-law for about six months to a year before before he died and watched him kind of fade away and stuff after being a real physical guy worked on the worked on the extension with him up on the roof carrying roof tiles he was strong as an ox and stuff and then he couldn't walk and I won't go into detail but loads of horrendous things happened before you know but anyway 
it just irritated me. It just felt as though for someone who's kind of pushing the courageous type thing, I sort of thought, yeah, there's a certain amount of courage actually though in kind of accepting your fate to a certain extent and kind of being responsible and kind of growing old for your family, taking taking responsibility for as long as you possibly can. And part of that is is maybe looking after yourself, is maybe inevitably getting older and unfortunately getting weaker physically, getting sick. None of us really want to rot away and kind of become shells of our former selves, obviously. You know, I can't stand the thought of that. I'm a very physical person. I've run marathons. I've never climbed any mountains and I never would, to be fair. I wouldn't have the bottle for it. So I get what he's saying, but it just kind of got my back up a little bit. I just kind of felt like, yeah, you know, what do you think the rest of us want to do? Like, There was a few stories in there that, unless I missed them, unless I switched off, there was a few stories in there that I'd heard afterwards that I feel as they should have been in the book. So I read somewhere about him as a kid swimming across a river just to sort of challenge himself to do it and how he got to one side and then he realised he had to go all the way back again and he basically got so, so tired that he basically gave up on the way back and as he stood up, he realised he was in knee-deep water, which was like, and he kind of like thanked God and thought, my God, that you know, he basically says that he had, he had given up, he was that tired, he had no choice kind of thing and he'd heard stories about people getting taken by alligators or crocodiles and stuff and I thought, Jesus, to even go near water like that, I just wouldn't even consider it. Little stories like that that really kind of got my imagination. I thought that should have been in the book, potentially. He was the guy who took the famous photo that was in the papers of people queuing past the Hillary step on Everest. I'll show you now that hideous queue, like the most claustrophobic thing I've ever seen. I think even though you're out in the open air, you're literally in the death zone, just stuck, people in front of you, people behind you, it must just be, you certainly got to have a certain type of mindset to put up with that really, you've either got to be bloody stupid or just very mentally tough basically, and I think probably from what I've heard you get a combination of both on Everest to be honest, sorry but I think that's that's the feeling I get, I think you get a lot of very arrogant wealthy types who feel as though, you know, they've Maybe they don't feel as though they've got nothing better to do, but clearly do have nothing better to do than to go up a mountain, put themselves in danger, put the Sherpas in danger as well, potentially, who are there with, you know, trying to make a living, who are actually the real heroes, because they're the ones who apparently, according to NIMS, I haven't done much research on this, but apparently, according to NIMS, they carry more weight and stuff. And I just think, it, part of that makes me angry. I just think, if you're a rich tosser who's going up Everest, you're paying tens of thousands of pounds, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds, or whatever it is, and you're bragging to your mates that you climbed Everest, yet you had some Sherpa doing most of the work. I just think, is that really bragging right? I mean, clearly in certain circles it is, and they must all just slap each other on the back and give each other high th fives and think that they're amazing and stuff. But I just think that sort of gets my back up a little bit as well. I know there are some mountain climbers out there who are amazing, who like NIMS, are fully dedicated. And NIMS is a military guy as well, so I tend to think like if you're in the military, I can understand doing this sort of thing because you might actually need to do it you might need to exert that physical kind of endurance in real life for, for a reason so I kind of get around that really but these guys who are just rich and consider themselves leaders of men and all these power you know they think they're wonderful because they've climbed a mountain I just think yeah ego isn't that much to be admired I don't think personally um, but there you go you get different I've spoken to people before and I know some of them are good people with the right intentions and stuff, but I know there's there's a lot of tossers as well, to be honest. Um, feel free to comment on that. I'd quite happily hear what you've got to say about that. That's just how I feel. He talks about a guy who died who hadn't properly acclimatised, and you just think, like, why would you do something? Why would you go up something like that and not acclimatise yourself properly or rush it or just be foolish about it? It's just so stupid. Um, he talks about a guy who got snow blind at one point. I don't know if this was on Everest, it was on one of them. and um, Or he reckoned he got snow blind and they found out that he was lying in the end and they, they were really furious with him. He was just lying so that they, the other guys could do the work. And I thought about it afterwards and I thought, God, you can imagine being in that situation, though, can't you? Terrified for your life and stuff. And I also wonder whether mental capacity might come into that somehow. When you're at that kind of altitude, if your mind, you know, you're starved of oxygen, there's a potential argument there maybe maybe there isn't but I get the feeling there might be a potential argument for whether you've actually got full capacity at some point do you actually have full kind of control over over what's going on and over decision making in, in the eyes of the mental capacity act not necessarily don't know that's an interesting one that's something I'd like to like to hear about said about the queue people who are angry because they spent, spent lots of money in their queuing you just think again self-entitlement just because you spent loads of money doesn't mean you're not going to be queuing at the top of Everest like sorry you know, you can be as rich as you like and spend as much money as you like, but clearly 
nature and governments and different countries don't give a shit basically so you know you can be as self-entitled and stamp your feet as much as you like but unfortunately that's the reality so you might have to deal with that i'm afraid um but his his psychology is like was, was pretty amazing he's talking about everything being bigger than him and it wasn't just about him it was the mission it was a mission that he wanted to go on um and you know he wanted to represent the Gurkhas. He wanted to represent his family, and that was all really admirable and stuff. Obviously, I you know that's fantastic. I had nothing against that at all. Those were all the positive sides of the book. He talked about not having as much fanfare as he as he expected. He was saying, oh, if it was someone from Manchester or New York, then people would have been flocking there, necessarily taking more notice. And I just thought, again, fair enough, mate. I really respect what you're doing. I, I think it's crazy what you're doing. You're climbing the fourteen highest peaks in six months when the previous record was about. Was it seven years or something? I'll, I'll check that after because I'll correct it if I'm wrong. But it's something like that. He did it in six months. And I think, you know, he still plans to do even more. But anyway, so there's no doubt that he's crazily capable and what, and what he's done was really, really difficult. There's no doubt about that at all. And I can't, I don't, I can't. I climbed, me and my brother climbed a volcano in Peru back in, is it 10 years ago or so? Something like that. It feels like yesterday. Close to 10 years ago, probably. And we had no mountain climbing experience whatsoever. We didn't even, we barely even walked. We, we've we always been runners. We've run like, th we used to run three or four miles as quick as we could up hilly road courses in Cornwall. Both lifted weights, both looked after ourselves, kept ourselves fit, but weren't, weren't hikers. Hiked across South America, walked everywhere, you know, walked 30 kilometers a day quite often. Got on the cheapest buses possible, slept less than three hours, just absolutely knackered ourselves. It was hell on earth for us, really. For soft asses like us, it was really hard work. And we decided to go up Mount Mount Misty in Peru. Peru or Ecuador? Peru, I think, yeah. Um, was it? I don't know. Somewhere in South America. I think it's about 5,800 metres or something. And we just went up there in these crappy hired snow outfit we didn't even bother hiring sticks because we wanted to save money we had to camp at base camp we had about i don't think we had any sleep i think we felt as though we'd had none at all we might have had an hour or two at best possibly got up at two o'clock now to hike to the top we were absolutely on our knees by the time we got up to the top there didn't suffer with altitude sickness luckily there was an american guy who was storming ahead from the beginning and in the end we actually ended up beating him but we got beaten by most people up there we were just we just fancied ourselves as tough and we didn't just didn't respect it at all we were just knackered and when i got up there i realized i had to come back down again i literally hadn't given it a second thought that we, once you were there you're only halfway you have to come back down luckily coming back down was quite easy because the the guide found a way where you could kind of jump down this shingly type stuff and you we went down fairly quickly but we almost it wasn't an avalanche a snow avalanche but we had to get down on the ground at one point because boulders flew past us and they were coming at proper speed they were they were bouncing and each time they let they were doing god knows that you know if they'd hit us they'd have killed us basically so that was quite scary so that's the most i've ever done i've got no idea about mountain climbing really um i just know that i wouldn't want to do it to be honest but i do have you know i, I find it really interesting these stories about about mountain climbing and about everest and things i find it fascinating there's dead bodies up there and stuff aren't there and if you don't like the look of dead body you know if you don't want to look look away now because i'm going to put a picture on of one of the dead bodies that i thought was a bit gross just for entertainment uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty creepy. But um, but anyway, this book, um, there's loads of stuff I can say about it. I just found some of it a bit irritating. I, I, you know, the fact that he's standing up for Sherpas and things, fantastic, really good. He's obviously really single-minded. He's really capable. Just didn't like some of the arrogance, potentially. Didn't like some of the self-entitled comments, whether he meant it like that or not. Maybe he didn't, to be fair. It just sounded a bit like that to me. Um, and I just think, yeah... The narration and the way it was writ was written was pretty poor. I think it could have been a much, much better book. But give it a go. If you don't want to re read it, look him up on YouTube, do a bit of research. He's very interesting. I think what he's done is very commendable and stuff. And look up the Gurkhas. They're, they're very interesting, very impressive. But yeah, Beyond Possible, uh, Nims Die Purger. Could have been much better. But yeah, cheers.